Hi everybody, so you're really comfortable with macro equilibrium, now you're looking at shifting these curves. You might think this is an absolute piece of cake, but you've got to make sure you're 100% confident with it, given the number of times you're going to be shifting AD, SRAS, LRAS in your examinations, in your essays. Let's look at a shift of AD first. There are two ways of using the classical model to shift AD, and then we'll look at the Keynesian interpretation. Let's start simple with the classical model and just have SRAS and AD. So there we are. Equilibrium is here at Y1 and P1. Let's just take an AD shift to the right in each case. We've got AD1 to AD2. That's shifting it right. And then we're showing an increase in economic growth and an increase in demand for inflationary pressure. So this is a very simplified version, but 100% correct. We don't have an LRAS on here. We don't need it if we're just trying to show some very, very simple outcomes of increased growth and increased demand for inflationary pressure. So that's one way of using the classical model. A second way includes LRS, and it looks something like this. So start in the same way, AD and SRS. There we go. But now we can stick on an LRS curve, right? Maybe over here. All right, we need to label now. So there's full employment. There is currently a gap in the economy, a deflationary gap, a recessionary gap, a negative output gap, whatever you want to call it, with a price level of P1. So if you want to start there, then you can shift AD to the right, from AD1 to AD2. And we're showing exactly the same outcomes, an increase in economic growth and an increase in demand for inflationary pressure. But at least now you've got YFE, so maybe for some evaluation, for talking about spare capacity being exhausted, moving towards YFE, this might be better for you if you want to be a bit more technical and you want LRS to be included on in your diagram. For Keynes, it's a lot easier. There is only one way of showing a shift of AD. Remember, the Keynesian LRS curve looks something like that. All right, so stick AD on. A good idea is to make sure that AD is cutting LRS at the sweet spot, the bendy part of LRS, and then you'll show exactly the same outcomes as we're showing above. So AD1 to AD2. We're seeing an increase in economic growth from Y1 to Y2. You've also got YFE. Remember, don't forget to label that. And we're also showing an increase in demand pull inflationary pressure from P1 to P2. So very simple using Keynes right there. Uh, the beauty of using Keynes is you've got lots of evaluation on one diagram. So if AD was on the horizontal part, there wouldn't be the inflationary pressure. If AD was on the vertical part, there wouldn't be the increase in growth. There would just be inflationary pressure. So this one is very powerful for evaluation. Um, if you're shifting AD to the left, you've got the same three options, just shift AD the other way. So that covers shifts of AD. Let's now move on to SRS shifting either right or left. Shifts of SRS is really simple. It's a classical model phenomena, so you have to use that. Use the simplified version. So we've got SRS there. We've got AD cutting it. Keep it as simple as that. Equilibrium at Y1, price level at P1, and then just shift SRS whichever way. So if you want to show a positive supply side shock from SRS1 to SRS2 with an increase in economic growth and a reduction in cost push inflationary pressure, or if you want to show a negative supply side shock, then shift SRS to the left from SRS1 to SRS3, a decrease in economic growth and an increase in cost push inflationary pressure, also known as stagflation, that phenomenon. So that's how you shift SRS. Uh, if there is a change in cost of production that affects all firms in the economy, simple as that. Let's now look at LRS. For shifts of LRS, again, you've got two options, the classical model or the Keynesian model. Both are really, really simple. Do whichever one you prefer. Let's look at the classical model first. Right, we'll start with long run aggregate supply. We know it's vertical like that. And just have an AD curve, right? So simplifying it like that. We've got YFE there, and we've got our price level there at P1. And then just shift LRAS. Let's say we're shifting LRAS to the right, in which case our new LRAS curve is going to look like that. From LRAS1 to LRAS2, we see lower cost push inflation. So what we're showing here is an increase in both actual and potential growth and we're showing a reduction in cost push inflationary pressure just with an AD curve on it like that. It's simplified, but it's going to score you 100% of the marks available for the diagram if you use it in your essay. So that's the classical way of showing it. My recommendation, very simple. You've also got the Keynesian interpretation. So remember, 
the Keynesian LRAS curve looks like that. Right now, what I'd recommend to get this one drawn correctly, make sure your AD curve is cutting LRAS in the bendy part, in the sweet spot here. And then when we shift LRAS, you'll have four different uh, real GDP levels on your x-axis here. So let's get AD looking something like that. All right. So your initial equilibrium is there at Y1. And we've got the price level there at P1. Then shift LRAS to the right, like this. So from LRAS1 to LRAS2. What we're then showing is a new full employment level of output from YFE1 to YFE2. So there's your increase in potential growth, but then you've also got an increase in actual growth from Y1 to Y2, and a reduction in cost push inflationary pressure from P1 to P2. All right, so there's the Keynesian way. You're going to have four Y values on your X axis here. Um, and you're going to have the reduction in cost push inflationary pressure. That's the Keynesian interpretation. Whichever one you prefer using, it doesn't matter. You'll score full marks whichever way you go, as long as you draw it correctly. That covers shifts. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video when we look at output gaps. See you then.